13, 14, 15, we're still doing functional notation, but now they throw variables in there so that you can't simplify it into a number answer just to make sure you understand the concept. So we are going to replace any of our x's with 2n. So we're going to do 2 times 2n squared plus 4 times 2n, and then we're going to simplify that as much as possible. So we've got to do the squaring first. If I take 2n times 2n, that would be 4n squared. Then I'm going to multiply it by the 2 that's in front. So I get 8n squared there for my first term. My second term, I'm just taking 4 times 2n, which is 8n. These are not like terms. I can't add them together. So my answer is just 8n squared plus 8n. So number 14, this time I'm going to substitute z plus 5 in for my x's. So on the top of the fraction, I'm going to have z plus 5 plus 7. On the bottom, I'm going to take 3 times z plus 5 plus 2. So on the top of my fraction, I'm going to get z plus 12. On the bottom of my fraction, using my distributive property first, I get 3z plus 15 plus 2, which is 3z plus 17. I can't simplify that fraction unless I can factor out a common factor. I can't factor either the top or the bottom. And so z plus 12 over 3z plus 17 will just be my answer. Number 15, they want you to put a negative x in for the x. So I'm going to have a negative x squared minus 1. And when I square my negative x, I get x squared. So I just get x squared minus 1. I can't do anything else to simplify that. That's just going to be my answer.